needed to enter into your household, Father. We're able to come into your presence and to feel your touch, Father, to hear your voice, Lord, that we will be able to be challenged by you, to be transformed by you, so that to not be left the same way here, Lord God. Lord, we welcome you here in this place, Father. We welcome your Shekinah glory to come down. Take us into a deeper level with you, Father. Take us into the holies of holies where we get to experience your, your holy presence, Lord. Where we get to feel your awesome presence. To really just to be in that tangible presence with you, Father. We thank you for what you are doing in our lives. We thank you for what you have done even already in 2019, Lord. Lord, we bless you, and we just thank you for all that you've done in our lives and what you will continue to do. We pray that everything that will be done today will be a fresh fragrance unto you, that the worship will bring glory and honor to you, that everything that is done will be from your throne room, that nothing will be of man, nothing will bring glory to man, but everything will bring glory to you, the King of kings and Lord of lords. And we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done for us and what you will do here in this service tonight. In your precious and matchless name we pray. Amen. Church, let's continue to worship in this evening. Let's glorify his name this evening, church. Let's lift up, lift up our voices to the heavens and say, Oh Lord, we praise you, Jesus. Father, we give glory to your name, Father. Oh Lord, our hope is in you this evening, Lord Jesus. Oh, we come to you, Father, without holding anything back, Lord Jesus. Father, we come as we are, Lord Jesus. Oh, we give glory to you, Father. We exalt your holy name, Father.
His presence is overflowing. I mean, He's right here with us. Let's give our best praise to Him tonight. Amen.
all of you, you may take your seats. And welcome to church. It's always a privilege to come into the house of God, so much so that David says we enter into his house with thanksgiving. Amen. So today, we are so happy to see our Bethany family here, right? And we also have today one newcomer, Sister Ramona, I believe. Are you here? If you are, can you raise your hand? There we are, right at the back. Let's all give her a warm welcome. <laughs> Amen. We're so happy you are here. You're able to join us. And we welcome you to keep coming to our services and be a part of our family. And also we'd like you to, if you could, after service, to meet Pastor Bobby at the mother's room. When you go at the back in the mother's room, you see this very friendly pastor. That is Pastor Bobby. <laughs> He will make you feel right at home. Right, so our next announcement is for the kids. Kids who are over three, we encourage all the parents, please send them to Sunday school. We cannot, you, you know, stress the value of how important it is at a young age for them to learn about God. Right, so make sure that sometimes even if you can't, that you find a way to send children here and we have teachers have come up with an amazing curriculum. They have activities and there's all these great things planned to bless your child. And for children who are below three, there is a mother's room at the back. Parents, for your use, should you need to use it, you can always feel free during the service to go and spend some time there. And another thing we'd like to tell is for the youth. If you're about 13 years old, please, uh, there is a meeting for you today. You can leave, you can go, it's at the third floor, right? The teachers are ready to, to teach you. So I encourage all the youth to please go. It's going to be an amazing time. The next thing we have is that today there is going to be a special meeting 
with the Sunday school teacher. So all parents, we would request you, please do remain back a little while. Please make time to meet your, the teachers. This is very, very important, right? So you can get connected to the teachers. You know who they are. You can speak to them, and they have some important announcements, things they would like to discuss with you. So please remember today after service, all the parents, to stay back a little bit and to meet the Sunday school teachers. Right. We have an Alpha conference that is happening next month, right? How are you excited for it? Excited for Alpha? Amen, right? So there is an early bird offer that ends 31st January, right? Just around the corner. So please, please take advantage of it, right? It's a special offer for you. You can register yourself. You can register a group, right? The forms are at the back. Please do take you know, advantage of this. Invite your friends and come, invite colleagues, bring people in. This will be a great blessing. Right. We also have a baptism taking place on the 23rd of February. So for those of you who have not yet taken the waters of baptism, this is a very important step for a Christian. Right? Jesus himself got baptized. So we encourage you, if you've not been water baptized, there is a class happening on the 17th at 4.30 p.m. on the third floor. Right? So please come, attend the class, meet the pastors, meet the teachers, prepare yourself, and do come and take part in this as well. Right? We also have a very, very exciting announcement. I'm very excited about this, and that is our family camp. Yes, there we go. Our pastor is excited about it. Are we excited about it, church? Yes? How many of you are planning to come? Family camp, let's see. All the front row ready. Back row, can we get ready for family camp? Yes, it is going to take place on the 17th and 18th of May. Please keep the dates free. We are telling you this nice and early. So if you need to take your leave, if you need to make arrangements, you can talk to them, talk to your bosses and colleagues and get it all, you know, booked, blocked, kept aside, right? Collect the money that you need to collect for this. You have time. Right? Bring your whole family and come. It's going to be an amazing time. We're going to be impacted. We're going to hear teachings right, from the Word. We're going to get a special touch by the Holy Spirit. Right? This always happens at camps. It's like the Holy Spirit anointing is so strong. So we encourage all of you to come. Right now we're going to have a short video clip about this camp as well. Already I'm excited and I'm already ready, keeping my dates free to be here 17th, 18th of May. Right, and now we come to one of my most favorite part in a service, which is giving. Amen? Amen. I love it. Whenever I say, say it, it's give, I get so excited. Hallelujah. We invite all our ushers to come in front. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you. Praise you, Lord. Let's take up the offerings that we have got. Let's take it into our hands. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Father. Praise you, Father. Thank you. There is a special blessing, Lord. Your word says there's a special blessing for the children who give. Because you are not a debtor, Father, Lord God. You will not be in debt, Lord. When we give, you give back even more to us, Father. We thank you because giving is an opportunity for us to thank you, to say how grateful we are. Hallelujah, we praise you, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for this opportunity, Father, to give to you. We thank you for everyone here who has purposed in their heart that they will give. 
whatever the amount father we ask your blessings upon them we ask your blessings upon the seed that is going to be sown and we ask that this will reach and reap a bountiful harvest father lord god and we pray that lord you will expand our capacities so we'll be able to give even more father that we will give and give and give father lord god Lord I thank you Jesus I thank you because you showed us what it means to give Lord and you gave your son you gave it all we thank you Lord Father we once again commit the offering into your hands we ask a blessing upon it Father in Jesus name we pray amen we give you glory we give you honor we say thank you for your presence that is in the house of the lord tonight i mean while you give it while you sit and just want to be do it as a part of worship and as the worship team begins to continue to lead us in a little bit of worship so you gave you sit uh, if you want to stand you can stand sit let's go and lift your hands let's begin to give our 100% like we have been doing For Thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Thou art exalted far above all. Thou, O Lord, art high above all the earth. Jesus, Thou art exalted far above all God. And I
Bible tells us that there was a man called Daniel who prayed. He prayed and he prayed and he prayed and the Bible says somebody was blocking his prayers. And after 21 days the Lord begins to send support and we know that the prayers are answered. Uh, I want to ask you to get together with me and start praying for all the prayer cards that are here. You see Maybe there are some of you who have still not written your request, but I really believe with all my heart. As we begin to pray also, there is opposition that is working against your prayers being answered. How many of you know that? That there is opposition against your prayers. So some, not sometimes, I think all the time, many times, we need the prayers of others as well. And I am convinced as we begin to intercede, for the others, their prayers will also be answered and so will our prayers be answered. So by any chance, if you are still not given your prayer request to us, fire request, uh, make sure that you give it. We'll just put it on the wall and we want to pray for you. So would you stand up together with me tonight? And I'm excited about it. We're going to pray for one minute. Okay, we're going to pray for these cards. So you just lift up your hands and I want you to pray sincerely wholeheartedly pray with power pray with authority and say Lord I thank you in the name of Jesus every one of these requests are going to be answered okay ready at the count of one two three come on one two three come on pray lift up your voice that's right come on lift it up lift it up lift it up do some warfare tonight thank you Jesus you pray you pray you pray you pray you speak God's answers you declare it in the name of Jesus Yes, Lord. Come on, just 30 seconds more. 30 seconds more. Come on. Just do this warfare. Do warfare. Do warfare. God is answering prayers. Come on, 15 seconds more. 15 seconds more. 15 seconds more. Yes, Lord. We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we say thank you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth that every request on these walls, Lord, that it will come to pass before the 31st of December 2019. We say in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every request, God, we say thank you that it will come to pass in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord a great clap for that tonight. Awesome. Right. Amen. Please be sinner. Make sure that you get your prayer request on the wall. What a fantastic thing. Having friends and family praying for you. 365. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, worship team. 365 days, there's a prayer going on. So make sure that you get it here. That we can begin to pray for you as well. Once again, welcome to Bethany. We are so happy that you are here. Uh, we've been on a, a series called Created by Him, Created Like Him, Created for Him. This is our theme for 2019. And we've been speaking, teaching on this subject matter. So that people will begin to have a right understanding about themselves. They'll have a right understanding about God Himself. And they'll recognize who created them, why they were created, and how they were created as well. So every Sunday, I bring a Bible verse. And after that, I move into the book of Genesis. So tonight, I want to start with the book of Philippians chapter 3 and verse 10. And also, the way we have been doing Bible reading in the, month, in the year 2019 is all the letters in black, you read. The ones in red, I read. So there'll be certain places where you have to start certain places I have to start but we want to do it as a team it's very nice you know when you begin to do it together and we're all reading okay so at the count of one two three you read the black I read the red okay one two three know Christ to know the power of 
Supper. Now here we are. We are introduced to something called of a great man called the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul is making a declaration, a statement here, and he's saying that he wants to know. I'm making this clear. I think you know. Tell me what you want to know, and I will tell you where you want to go or where you will go. Tell me what you want to know, and I will show you where you will go in life. See the questions in a man's heart. The desires in a man's heart is the reflection of man's heart. Think about it. People want to know so many things, but unfortunately, they don't want to know the most important things. Here, the great apostle is telling us that he wants to know two very important things. He says, "I want to know who Christ, and I want to know the power of His." Resurrection. He says, "I want to know. I wonder what you want to know. Maybe there are some of you you want to know what your future looks like. What do you really want to know? But I think, as children of God, if we are mature in these, are the types of things that we will want to know." See, people want to know so many things. That is why we have so many palm readers. We have all these sastra people. They would come and give their palm and say, "What can you tell me?" They want to know something. All these devalas are there because of that. Now we have all these computers that are reading the palms. I'll tell you what. Everybody wants to know. But the truth of the matter is, regardless what they want to know, is the question is, what do you want? To know, I wonder if there is a longing in you that you really want to know Christ. If you really want to know the power of His resurrection. Sadly, in the church today, people know what they are not supposed to know, and they do not know what they are supposed to know. Like if you ask a person, sometimes maybe the most basic questions about Christ and the Scripture, they might not know it. But you ask them about one of these. Forgive me for saying this. Crazy Bollywood people and some, you know, jungle artists. They'll say, "I know him." I mean, they know that before the song comes out, they know the song. They know all the lyrics. They know all the dance moves. How many of you know? By knowing that, don't get me wrong, it won't take you anywhere. You might have a, you might know every actor's and actress's biography. Where would it take you? That did you read? Did you read the Bible? Did you get to know? No, Pastor, I could not spend there. Why? Where were you doing? I was visiting Gossip Lanka. I say Gossip Lanka. Doesn't take you anywhere. Did you read the scripture? No, I was too busy reading that magazine. I wanted the magazine angle to take you anywhere. What you want to know is a reflection of your heart. Tell me what you want to know, and I'll show you where you will go in life. The question that certain people ask us is a reflection of their heart. The great apostle is saying. I want to know Christ. Very, very simple. Bethany Church, you know what we want to know? We want to know the Lord. We want to know the power of His resurrection. We want to know the truth in the Word of God. That is what we want to know. I'm a strong believer in what I'm about to say. I believe all my answers are in Christ. I believe all my breakthroughs are in Christ, so I want to know Him. The most important person that you must work hard to get to know while you are on earth is none other than God Himself, Jesus Himself, the Holy Spirit Himself. You must work hard. To get to know them,
some of you are so interested to get to know the past i want you to know by getting to know the past you won't go anywhere but you get to know christ he will take you exactly where you are supposed to go you must get to know christ he says i want to know christ and i want to know the power of his resurrection we at bethany are encouraging you work hard every day to get to know the lord keep in that in mind i want you to turn with me to the book of genesis chapter 1 please okay chapter 1 verse 27 genesis 1 27 you remember how we are doing this you have a responsibility in reading i have a responsibility in reading okay so whenever we start and the bible verse is on the screen all that i do is i count 1 2 3 if it's in black if it's in red i start reading and i stop okay so this one we're starting with the black so 1 2 3 in his own image in the image of god now here i want to take note he's speaking about male and female created in whose image in the image of god what we're trying to do here is created by him created like him created for him i want to begin to have this understanding sometimes in parts of asia in africa and etc this is wrong concept that man is more superior than woman but when you read through the scripture you begin to have the right understanding male and female were created in whose image in the image of god so both are equally created nobody is higher than the other both are equally created in the image of god but sometimes men have this problem thinking that you are more superior it could be because in the world that we live in value is placed on people based on their title position and what their accomplishments are so it could be because of that but biblically man and woman are equal Now in a country like Sri Lanka very rarely would you see the chairperson or the managing director or a manager and the janitor having coffee together or having lunch together it's strange isn't it sometimes you go to these offices you have three lunch rooms one for the executives one for this and one for the other but when you go to countries like Japan America you guess what there is no three lunch rooms only one lunch room because they have understood something that many have not understood for those of you in this room if you are a child of god and you are in a superior place in a high rank in position and if you are struggling to drink a cup of tea or have a pack of lunch with another human being because you feel you are more superior i want you to know you are doing injustice to god because you have no right to put down another person every human being was created in whose image in the image of god male and female So do me a favor tonight if you are sitting and there is a sister next to you I want you to turn to that sister the lady and tell them we are created in the same image right come on we are created in the same image in the same image beautiful that means we are created in the image of Christ now sisters do me a favor to all the guys who begin to tell you that you tap them on the shoulder and say the only difference is we are created a bit more beautiful than you and that i mean that's all you need to do you know we are created a bit more beautiful than you we are created equal we have different functions different personalities based on the scripture but we are all are equal you get that 
somebody asked me the question if you were god how would you have done it i mean that's why i'm not god you know <laughs> don't answer i just want you to think what i'm about to say how many few men here find it a bit difficult to take it from a woman don't lift your hand how many of you get irritated when you see a woman lecture a woman teacher a woman trying to counsel a woman trying to tell you how to do it don't lift your hand how many of you get irritated here How many of you get irritated to think about what I'm saying? It's a bit difficult sometimes, isn't it? I was telling a story a couple of weeks ago on a Friday night. A lady takes me out for dinner. She takes me out for dinner and she said, I want to take you for dinner. I said, "Yeah, let's go for dinner." So that's nice. So the miracle so is full of fire and you know, miracles happen and I'm excited. God has done amazing things. So we get to this place and had this VIP room and Pastor Peter this precious dear sister i had to use my maybe she's watching online. You know, so this precious dear sister, you know, she started to talk. she had the tone of a man though she had the beauty of a woman and i'll tell you what she started speaking to me and telling me a few things that i did not like to hear but that i needed to hear i'm sitting in this restaurant and i'm grinding my teeth something is happening inside my tummy i'm getting so angry but i can hear the lord telling me listen to her you listen to her you listen to this woman so i am smiling <laughs> inside you know the fire the kettle is you know it's just it's i'll tell you what the water is i'm about to explode but i can hear the lord is telling me it's because sometimes we've been brought up that man is more superior than woman woman always knows lesser than man that's not true all the time we are created in the image of god male and female think about what i'm about to say treating men treating women rightly and women treating men rightly is very important you know why now catch what i'm saying when you play with a woman or you play with a man you are playing with the image of god take that dead serious when you play the fool with a man or a woman you are playing with the image of god be very very careful So male and female created like Christ was 26 and was 28 a few more things tonight as we begin to study this subject 1 2 let us make mankind in our image rule was 28 bless be fruitful and increase subdue it rule hey man if you are sitting next to a person who is married you look to them and say be fruitful and multiply okay be fruitful and multiply who said that two of my good friends have come alonso and michel doll 
be fruitful and multiply so just for you okay so i mean fruitful and multiply i want to take this thought from here that every human being was created with power and ability take note we were created with power and ability when you read verse 26 and verse 28 you begin to recognize this that we were created with power and ability this power and ability is not in the outside it is placed the inside of every human being when you have the revelation and the understanding that you are created with power and ability it begins to help you to start having an outlook of life in a different way you don't start thinking oh poor me you know why powerful people don't think poor me is that correct have you ever seen a powerful person say oh poor me i feel sorry for myself no powerful people are different why power god has given you power to rule to rule over what to rule over yourself first You see, we all want to rule over the other. First to rule over yourself. To rule over temptation. To rule over sin. You have been given the power to rule. You are a powerful person. You are not a weak person. Maybe mama told you. Dada told you. Maybe your teacher told you. Maybe somebody else told you. But regardless of what they told you. I want you to know you are a powerful person. Now the question one can have answer ask here is what about the people who are born with various syndromes various uh, uh deformed things and etc the only way I can answer it exactly based on the bible it is because of the nature of sin. Sin is the reason we see all the manifestations whatever is wrong that is the reason that is why those of you here married you need to make sure that you begin to start maintaining a good godly lives you know why it could have maybe a negative effect on your children and your children's children etc i heard somebody saying in a family that has practiced witchcraft and done demonic evil things within 3 to 4 generations you can easily find one or two children who have been born like this they say and there's a lot of truth in that but that's not my subject matter but i wanted to begin to recognize you were created with power and also with ability every one of you has ability residing inside of you some of you even do not know the gifts that god has placed in you i met many people and i would ask them the simple question tell me what can you do and they would reply back to me and say tell me what you want me to do i said no 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 that's not the question i asked you tell me what can you do tell me in what areas are you gifted What are your talents in life? What are your abilities in life? What can you do? I want to ask you the question, do you know the abilities that reside inside of you? Do you know them? If you still do not know them, maybe it's a good thing to do. From this week, take a book and start writing them down. These are the abilities that God has given me. Now why was this power and ability is given in the book of Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 it tells us why this power and ability was given 1 2 3 to work it and to take care now take note of the two words what did the lord why did the lord put them in the garden to work it and to take care of it so why does god give man power and ability very quickly the bible is answering why because god wants man 
to use them work it and take care of it see some of you in this room tonight you have not got to the place where god wants to take you simply because you have not used your gifts your abilities that god has given you friends the gift the abilities the talents that god has given you is for you to use it so that god can begin to get glory and through that that god can begin to take you higher heights bless you and do greater things in you there are some of you in this room you are amazing you have used your gifts and your abilities and your talents and that is why you are enjoying whatever you are enjoying because you have been using them using them using them unfortunately many people in the church talk more about what they don't have and don't do anything with what they have i want you to know by talking about what you don't have you're not going to get anything but doing whatever you can with what you have is how you are going to attract the blessing of god and the lord said to adam adam i want you to work the garden and i want you to begin to protect the garden adam this is your assignment adam you must use the power i'm giving you adam you must use the ability i'm giving you some of you in this room you have more gifts and abilities than others if you have more you are more accountable and responsible to god that's the way you look at it to whom much is given much is also required you must begin to do it in the book of song of solomon the bible tells us a very interesting thing he said i neglected my vineyard and i worked on other people's vineyards i neglected my vineyard and i worked on other people's vineyard and as a result of it the song of solomon tells us the small foxes have entered my vineyard i want to take note of what i'm saying the lord said adam you must work it and you must protect it see unfortunately many people are good at protecting every other person's vineyard and neglecting their vineyard in single it's nice anunge vatu bala ganda ape minisu hari dakshai tamage vatta palu karala so you have a responsibility to work in your garden to work on your garden that's your number one responsibility far too many people are working on another person's garden with a working in your own garden you are first required to work in your own garden first love yourself your wife your husband your kids your parents then love the rest there are some people i always tell this you know they love every other person's wife haven't you seen that they're so nice they're so kind to every other person's wife hi darling anne sweetheart i mean i'm shocked that poor wife is looking at the husband and she, this fellow has never called me that he's calling everybody darling everybody sweetheart first you watch your vineyard that's the way you, it works you must watch your vineyard work on your vineyard you see we get opportunities maybe every week or more often to come and speak in various churches honestly we do that but my number one responsibility is bethany church rajagiri i am committed to the kingdom of god but my number one 
responsibility is this church i have people from other churches sometimes call me and say can you come for this and pray for us and i would love to do that but i will not neglect this and go for that because my responsibility is first here so you must ask yourself the question are you working on your own vineyard that's your life second your family and third whatever assignment the lord has given you we must begin to do it if you are not you will begin to find out the little foxes slowly creeping and i'll tell you what foxes will find a way to creep but that is why you have a responsibility to watch and to work on your own garden I'm saying this in love husbands watch over your wife wife watch over your husband parents watch over your kids kids watch over your parents leaders watch over the congregation that's your responsibility that's our responsibility tells us in genesis chapter 3 and verse 10 that the lord came finding for adam and eve like last week i shared this with you and when the lord came finding them the bible tells us that adam and eve were hiding in the garden right you remember that they were hiding in the garden why were they hiding in the garden because they have committed sin I want to take note we all have the power to commit sin but we have no power to choose the consequences of sin we all have the power to commit sin but the consequences of sin we can't choose Adam and Eve used their free will and they did what they wanted to do and the bible tells us that they were hiding I want to show you three consequences of sin here. What does sin do? Number 1, sin pushes you behind. See Adam and Eve were given this beautiful garden to run around to play to work on it, to enjoy it. But what was Adam and Eve doing? They were hiding in that garden. Why were they hiding? Because they have disobeyed God. Maybe there are some of you here. You are in the place of hiding. You know why? because you have disobeyed god now listen to what i am saying disobedience pushes you back obedience takes you forward disobedience pushes you back obedience takes you forward had a many they've gone behind even though they were created to be in front the church of the lord jesus christ is called to lead but sometimes you see the church is only following why because the church has disobeyed i'm asking you the question again how about you where are you right now are you in a place of obeying or are you disobeying disobedience takes you back obedience will take you forward because of the act of disobedience in genesis chapter 3 verse 10 for the first time in the bible we are introduced to the word called fear now to ask the question we are created in whose image in the image of god in god's likeness does god have fear God has no fear. The first time we are introduced to fear by. See fear is the manifestation of sin. Fear is the manifestation of sin. 
because they disobeyed God suddenly fear has entered them i want to think i want to think we are created in the image of god in the likeness of god see god does not know what fear is we will have fearful moments in our life but we don't have to live in fear the disciples experienced fearful moments they were in the boat when the storm hit and it was a fearful moment out of their mouths the words came lord master rabbi don't you care that we are about to die we are afraid you are going through a fearful moment in life but you know we are not called to live in fear i have seen many christians living in fear pastor what would my future look like what will happen see when you come to christ and you have the revelation you should not fear anything you know why you have this understanding nothing will happen to me without god's knowledge and even though bad happens to me god will reverse it for my good so you have the revelation and you said my goodness so true it is this is how god begins to work this is how god begins to work i was at the mna marriage meeting and i was coming out of the meeting with a few chocolates in my hand and sister tanuja she's the lady who collects all the money and the watch she's the watcher of everything she looked at me and said pastor you are taking too many chocolates and going i said tanuja i did not take anything everybody was given the opportunity to take a chocolate they told me to take a chocolate glen i said no i don't want one but the people who organized it the host they took chocolates in their hand and they said pastor hold your hand so i was very obedient that is all i did <laughs> learn a principle when you try to take things you don't get the best when you let god work on your bed you get more so tanuja was jealous because she operated in the flesh i operated in the spirit she operated in the logos i operated in the rema that is the way it happens fear fear i'm not to speak about fear here some of you are very fearful i'm telling you if you are living in sin you fear if you are living for christ don't fear about anything don't fear about anything simple the consequences of sin it also has a negative effect on your mind the way you think begins to change and as a result of it the way you speak is also affected In the book of Philippians it tells us we have the mind of Christ. But when we are disobedient, when we fall into sin, no longer are we thinking like Christ, we are thinking the wrong way. We think different. You remember the story of the prodigal son? You remember that? He was the son of a rich man. but he disobeys the father using his free will and he walks away from the father's house he uses his free will he disobeys the father and the bible tells us he was in a very disappointed broken wounded place and as he was coming back to his father's house the bible says and he thought if my father would accept me as who not as a son as a servant you can see he has moved from a son's mentality into a servant's mentality because he has committed sin he has disobeyed moved from a son's mentality 
into a servant's mentality. I want to bring to your notice that you and I are called the sons and the daughters of the Most High God. We are not servants, we are sons and daughters. But if you begin to disobey, you get the servant's mind. We are sons and daughters who serve. Where did Eve go wrong? In the book of uh, 1 John chapter 2 verse 16. Very interesting. It spells out the entire story here. 1, 2, 3. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. Take note of this. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but from the world. He's speaking of three things that do not come from the Lord. It comes from another source. He's using the term lust. Lust. This was the problem. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life was the reason why Eve began to fall. When the serpent told her, Eve, if you eat of this fruit, you will be like God. The pride of life. She thought, man, great. I'm going to get promoted. You begin to see the lust of the eye and the lust of the flesh also manifested. She saw. And the truth of the matter is this. Every day, we all will have to fight this war. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. There's a person who came to me very genuinely, Pastor Joni, and he told me, Pastor Dishan, I want you to pray for me. I said, yeah, I'm going to pray for you. What can I pray for you? Can you pray for me? I'm getting these feelings. I want you to pray that God will take all these feelings away. And he was sincere to the core. You can look at it in his eyes and he really was, he meant it. I said, what do you want me to pray for? He said, Pastor, I'm getting these feelings. I want you to pray that God will take all these feelings away. I looked at him, I put my hand like this and I said, I say, how can I do that? Because you were created with feelings. Now take note what I'm saying. You were created with feelings. Who put it? Not the devil. God put feelings. I say, what you need is not to ask God to take your feelings away. Ask God to give you the power to control the feelings. You see, don't pray the wrong prayers. Lord, I pray that you take those feelings away. Be very careful. If you are married and you pray that prayer, your husband and wife will run away. The desire to advance. The desire to move forward. The desire to do well. It's the desires that God has planted in man. Nothing wrong in those desires. Long as those desires don't turn out to become what? Lust. So... When I start the altar call, you don't come here and say, Pastor, pray for me, for all my feelings to go. Once upon a time, a person told me, Pastor, I came for the altar call and a pastor laid his hands on me and he told me, I can see that you're having all these feelings. He came after the prayer and he told me, Pastor, I don't need a pastor to tell me that. I mean, it's not a word from God. It's not a word from the Lord. 
you don't need a prophecy for somebody to tell you i can see that you're having feelings because you were created with feelings is that correct i mean it's absurd it has to be a word from god if you do not have feelings but that is why the great apostle paul tells us i want to know who christ and the power of his resurrection the answer to life is found in that knowing christ and having a revelation of the power of his resurrection the more i know christ the more i get to know the power of his resurrection the more i am empowered to face the temptations that bring come across me every day i'm about to close but i want to ask you the question where are you in this journey of life where are you in this beautiful journey of life i feel so strong in my spirit tonight there are some of you who are gone way behind in life because of your disobedience god is speaking to you there are some of you in this room you're not using your god given power and your ability god is speaking to you to use it now listen to what i'm saying not using the gifts and the ability that god has given you is good as misusing it you heard what i'm saying not using the gifts and the abilities that god has given you is good as misusing it it was given for a purpose you must do it some of you in this place you have neglected your vineyard you have neglected your life you have neglected your family you have neglected your call and you attended to everybody else god is speaking to you as well get things right get things right of course the most beautiful thing in this entire story is even though adam and eve had fallen short god comes shouting out their names in the garden adam where are you to give them an opportunity to reconcile with the lord the lord is calling you by name tonight if you sense that you are not in the right place you are disappointed god you feel that you're a failure you have hurt god you have rejected god you have disobeyed god i hope that you will hear the voice of heaven call in you by name and say i'm finding you i'm finding you i'm finding you would you close your eyes together with me what is the lord telling you right now what areas is the holy spirit ministering to you right now what areas is the holy spirit ministering to you tonight what is he speaking to you as an individual you were created by him like him for him 
because you're created like him you don't have to have any fear or anything when you have the revelation the revelation brings deliverance Thank you Lord tonight. Let's just take a few minutes would you stand up together with me? I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm just I do this every Sunday. It's just a request if you don't want you don't have to do it but the request is could you lift your hands to the heavens? Why pastor D do we lift hands? It's just sending a sign to heaven. I say Lord I surrender to you. I'm surrendering. Surrender every challenge that you have. Surrender the Lord every weakness you are carrying. Hand over every thing of your life to him right now. You hand it over to the Lord. So your hands are lifted up you just begin to speak to the lord for a few seconds you speak to him tonight the bible says the lord hears yes the lord hears Shira Baba Jesus Thank you Lord Thank you Holy Spirit Thank you Holy Spirit Kiara Baba Baba Jesus You are created with power you're created with ability <clears throat> don't believe the lie of the devil don't believe what people have told you hmm. yes lord thank you jesus thank you holy spirit Jesus ra ba 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 Thank you Jesus I'm no longer fear so free yes I am a child of God yes. I'm no longer I'm no longer slave to fear Yes, Lord, you do it. I'll deliver us from my enemy. Amen. Yes, you do that, Lord. Till all my fears are gone. 
you unravel me yes, you do. with a melody you surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemy yes, you do. to all my Think of those lines. I'm no longer a slave to fear. Why? Because I'm a child of God. I have the revelation that I'm created by Him. I have the revelation I'm created like Him. I have the revelation I'm created for Him. So I choose not to fear. I believe God gives me the power to live a victorious life. I believe God gives me the power to overcome sin. God gives me the power to overcome Satan. God gives me the power to say no to what is wrong and He gives me the power to say yes to what is right. I believe I can flourish while I'm on earth because God created me with ability. Thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord, tonight. We give you glory. We give you honor, God. Just worship a little bit more tonight, you know. The Bible tells us to, to pray in tongues. In the book of Jude, verse 20 says, pray in the heavenly language. The reason is, it begins to build your faith up. It's beginning to speak mysteries to the Lord. 
it speaks confusion to the enemy and i sense the next few minutes pastor jude we're going to start worshiping in tongues we're going to start praising in tongues and i recognize there are some of you even right now god is doing a work inside of you healing is coming a deliverance is coming the strength that is coming oh rabba baba baba ba. come on pray pray in the spirit pray in the spirit that's right pray in the spirit thank you for tonight we thank you according to your scripture where it says truth brings freedom and we say thank you lord that we are exposed to your truth and as a result of it we know we are free i thank you that your people are not in bondage I pray that you will begin to protect these people in this week. That you will begin to cause them to speak to others who do not know Christ. That you will use these people to be a good testimony and to be a blessing to other people as well. Keep their families together. Help them to flourish in their business, in their work, and for the children their studies let them flourish in their studies and sports and etc i bless this congregation in jesus mighty name amen and amen god bless all of you have a fantastic week if you need to speak to one of the pastors leaders you need prayer we are here to help you and to serve you thank you worship team you speak the sea so I-